Okay, here's the second uh, practice problem that I sent out. It is 8.3D, number 10, 10th problem in that section. And this one's a little bit more complicated than the previous one, um, but let's go through it. Let's talk through it first. Uh, I'm gonna go a little more quickly than uh, the last video that I made um, from that previous problem. Like I said, that that problem was, its level level of difficulty was around like a two or three. It wasn't, wasn't that difficult, shouldn't be that difficult at, at this stage. Um, this one is a little bit more complex, but definitely doable um, if you've been practicing a little bit. So let's go through what we're thinking when we take a look at something like this. All right, so kind of like, well, just like the last one, the conclusion is just one statement letter. It's just T. So immediately we're going, okay, so how do we get the T by itself out of all of this? And um, it might not be immediately apparent how you're gonna do something like that. So one, one, strategy, one strategy would be to uh, kind of uh, make a couple equivalence moves or inference rules moves and see what you get and go from there. Um, let's talk through and see if we can see uh, a few things from these premises and, and how we get this. So obviously there's the T and there's a T right there. So we know, we're pretty sure this is gonna be involved in some way. And remember, this is a biconditional. So we can think of our biconditional rules. And uh, one that immediately jumps out. Let's see if we can go to the equivalence rules. Let's see, I um, forget exactly where it's located. There it is, uh, material equivalence. All right, so this one says that P if and only if Q is equivalent to this, if P then Q, and if Q then P. All right, so this is um, this is sort of revealing about what a biconditional is. A biconditional says there's a conditional that goes this way, and, there's the end, the conditional goes this way too. The conditional goes if P then Q, and the conditional goes if Q then P, and that's what this is saying right there. So that will probably come in handy because that at least gets the T out of there in a way that we can maybe work with the two different parts. And uh, in AND statements, remember, we can always simplify. So we can always drop one of these down into a separate line. So that's where I think we're wanting to go with this. All right, so we're gonna separate this out with the ME uh, rule, equivalence rule. And one of those is gonna be, it's gonna say, if not Q, then T. So one of the ways that we can get T by itself is getting not Q. All right, so let's see, how do we get not Q? Well, obviously Q is right here, so we're gonna need to work with premise three. And one of the ways we do that, um, I'm looking at this conditional right here. And again, because I have used uh, the web tutor, because I've looked at the different uh, equivalence rules and inference rules, I know that I can apply a rule called uh, contraposition or contrapositive. Let's see, is it on this one? Let's see, I can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Nope, it's not on this one. It is on this one, five equivalence rules. Uh, let me see, yeah, contraposition, here it is. So the contraposition rule says if I have if P then Q, then I can just basically swap them, switch them, and negate both the antecedent and the consequent, and that is equivalent to just the conditional. And why, do I, why am I looking at that rule? Well, if I swap this so that I get Q on the other side, on the consequent side, negate it, then I have not Q, and if I have not Q, I get T, remember, from here. So um, in order to get not Q, we have to get uh, this, uh, yeah, if not Q is over here, then we needed to get the other side of the conditional, which in this case would be not, not, parentheses, not C or D. And I'm seeing some things up here that might help us. Okay, so first things first, um, I'm not gonna walk through the rest of it, I'm just kind of getting you started on what I see. So our next, line, I look at this and I immediately, because I've been doing my practice and going over the rules, I immediately see a rule that can be applied. And which one is that? Let me go over to it. I don't know if it's on this one or the other one. So I'm gonna to be toggling between a couple different uh, PDFs here that have our rules. 
Where is it? Scroll left, scroll right here. <clears throat> here it is. Exportation. So this fits that exactly. This says if I have in parentheses P and Q, if P and Q then R over here, then I can apply this equivalence rule and put this down. If P then, if Q then R. All right, so let's do that with this right here because that fits the form exactly. I have an and statement, conditional, and then consequent, and I can uh, put this down as its equivalent. All right, so for number five, let's see what happens there. So what I can do is B conditional parentheses, if C, then D. And we were just looking at the first premise there and we applied the exportation rule. Here, I set it up for you. So remember, you can also look at the forms down here if the PDF for some reason isn't immediately accessible to you. Here are the forms down there, and we abbreviate it this way with EX. All right, so we have if B, then this conditional here. Now, obviously, the reason I did that is because we actually have B. So if we have B, then we get this over here. So B, gets us that and we have B. So B and if B then this gets us if C then D. And the two lines that I used are two and five, which we just put down above and modus ponens. Easy enough so far, so good, hopefully. All right. So if I have if C or D, right? And again, immediately, if you're not seeing what I'm seeing, then it just takes a little bit more practice um, in these equivalent rules and these inference rules. I'm immediately seeing that this right here, remember we wanna do a contrapositive, uh, I think on this one, contraposition and, and swap them. Um, but I'm immediately seeing right here that this is gonna be equivalent to if P then Q, All right? And where where is that rule? Let's see. Uh, again, I'm swapping between a couple different PDFs here in our rules, and I forget exactly what, here it is, material implication. All right, and this is saying, I'm actually gonna read it right to left. If I have not P or Q, that is equivalent to if P then Q. All right, so these two things, this is a good one to have in your head because you're gonna use this, um, I believe. And this is, I should say this, this is a common rule um, that, that we use. So make sure that you have this one down. Not P or Q is equivalent to if P then Q. Okay, so what I can do for number three is I'm just going to apply that rule inside the parentheses here. Now, we've talked about in class, you can't always do that. Um, for example, if something is, well, we've gone over examples, but let me, let me just apply and then you'll see what I need. So what I can do here is if, Q, that stays the same, and we're gonna keep the negation, of course. But inside this parentheses, I can put if C, then D, right? And so the rule, sorry, the line that I used was three. We just took a look inside and applied the rule of MI, material implication. Okay, so you can see sort of where I'm going with this. Uh, the next thing that we want to do then is, remember in line six, we have if C or D, and here's if C or D here. So let's apply contraposition on seven and see what we get. So if we do that, remember it's just swapping these sides of the conditional and negating both of them. So if I negate that right side, put it on the left side, I'm gonna get not not if C then D. And then the conditional and not Q. And remember, um, we talked about beforehand, if we have not Q, I think we can get T. So let's see how this goes. All right, so we applied to line seven, the rule of contraposition. Okay, now we gotta clean this double negation up. And that's a, that's a really easy rule, all right? Um, how we clean that up is we now just write if C then D. If that, then we get not Q. And what do we do to get rid of those uh, those two negations, that double negation? We just applied 
the rule double negation to line eight. Now it cleans that up. All right, so we have just if this, then we get not Q. And we have this, right, right up here, if C then D. We have if C then D, so then we can get that consequent right there. All right, so let's get it. We want not Q, and we have it not Q by which lines? Six right here, and nine, and using the modus ponens rule. Now just a quick reminder, the modus ponens rule, P doesn't have to be just one statement letter, right? In this case, our P is gonna be if C then D. All right, so again, these are argument forms and P can stand for however complex the antecedent can get, all right? It can stand for something that is, is much more complex than just one statement letter, just a reminder there. All right, so we got, we got not Q. Now, remember, here's our goal, here's the conclusion, and there's something here, we wanna get that T out of here, and we want to apply that ME rule for the biconditional. And when we do that, here's what we get. The biconditional means it goes if not Q, then T, and also the other way, if T, then not Q. So we're gonna put that down. That's the equivalence, all right, so not, Q, conditional T, that's going one way with the conditional, and there's the and, see that right there? And goes the other way too. T, conditional, not Q. And we just took line four and applied the material equivalence rule. Let's take a look at that again, just so that we have the form down there it is, material equivalence, right? P by conditional Q is equivalent to one way the conditional goes, if P then Q, and the other way the conditional goes, if Q then P. All right, back to the problem. So we applied that, and here, right, we're almost there. Here we can simplify in a way that we know will eventually give us T. All right, so we have not Q, and if we have not Q, we can get T. We just need to get this by itself right here. And in and statements, that's very easy to do. We just apply the rule of simplification. Let's go to that, where is it? There it is, simplification. If we have two and statements, remember P can be as complex as you want. Then you can just drop one of those sides of the conjunction down as a separate line. And that's what we're gonna do here, right? Here is our P in the simplification rule, and we're just gonna drop that down. So I'm gonna write not Q, if not Q, then T. And all we did was in line 11, we apply the rule of simplification. And why did we do that? Because here's our goal T, and we're almost there. We have not Q, we have if not Q, then we get T, so we can get T, All right? From lines 10 and 12, 10 and 12, and modus ponens. And everything, if I did this right, should check out. Let's see. And we're good, we got our congratulations. So that's how you do that second practice problem. A little more complex than the previous one, but when you talk through it, when you think of a strategy, when you remember some basic things, when you uh, apply some of the practice that you've done in the web tutor, it shouldn't be too difficult.